Hi, I'm Gwen Kelly, and I'm going to show you how to take some archaeological data and make it more consistent so that it can be analyzed using a pivot table. A pivot table will give you a summary of the data. In this case, uh, I want to summarize it by the trench area that it was excavated in and by the level or depth at which it was excavated. The data are spindle whorls, and I want to categorize them by the type that they were classified. So I'm going to first start making this data more consistent. We have a unit category. These are the different units that were excavated, uh, some of them near each other and some of them uh, in separate areas. I want to group them together, the ones that are nearby, and create uh, a new category called trench. In order to do this, I'm going to insert a new blank column and uh, we're going to use an advanced filter feature to extract out the uh, unique unit names so that we can create a lookup table. So we'll do, take an advanced filter. We want to copy to another location. We want this list range, the unit list, and we're going to just copy it to the second column over here. Uh, and we only want unique records. This is going to give us a list of just the names of the trenches in uh, units in this category. So now we have this. We're going to use this to generate a lookup table uh, to combine some of these units into trench categories. So copy this, insert a new sheet, and we're going to call this unit and this trench. So here I'm going to paste this, delete that, we don't need it. And here we're going to decide which of these things goes together. It turns out that all of these top three are going to go into A1. Oops, what we did when we filled was fill down in series. What we wanted to do was fill down the same there we go. So if you hold option and uh, click the corner of the box and draw it down, you'll copy as opposed to fill in a series. So this means that these are our sources. This is what's going to come up in the unit column and we're going to use a lookup table to define trench. Oops, I did that there too. So we have to fill those down. Oops, I should have been holding down the option key the entire time. Okay, so this is what we want. If it's A1, we want it to return A1. If it's Meg1XY, we also want it to return A1. So this is finished, and I'm going to make this a named range. So I'm going to call, oops, except for we don't want to include unit and trench. I'm going to call this trench lookup. And you can name that there. That means these cells have this designation, trench lookup. All you have to do is hit enter. That means when we want to refer to them later, we don't have to use A2 through B29, we just refer to it as trench lookup. So here we want our trench column. So I'm going to clear out what I did before, and I'm going to name this trench. And here we're going to use the lookup function vlookup to refer to that table we just made. So vlookup will return the name, the word in the column to the right, uh, if that is what you designate. Um, so I want vlookup to look up this value in the table array, which we named uh, as trench lookup. That saves time. Um, we want the column index number to be column 2, that's the second column. And we want uh, this range lookup. 1 means you want an approximate find, uh, and 0 means you want an exact match. So we want an exact match. We want A1 to return exactly what is in the column next to it, and nothing if there's nothing to be found. In fact, what we're going to do to fix this is put an if error 
function in front, which means that if instead of that weird, you know, pound value exclamation exclamation point, um, if we wanted to just return a blank field, we'll do this. We'll enclose the function that we had, and we'll just put two quotation marks with nothing in between them, and that will return an empty cell if there is any kind of error. And actually, you don't need a period. So a1 returns a1. I'm going to fill down this column to fill all of the data. And if I've done it right, then anything in a1, which I've designated as za2 and a1 and may1xy, will return as a1. So that came out correctly.